Yanis Varoufakis is a scholar, writer, philosopher of clarity, insight, generosity, and engaging prose, not to mention integrity and courage. I know this from years of personal friendship. From this luminous book, it is not difficult to discern why the finance ministers of the Eurogroup and the hacks and flacks of the Brussels staff do not like him very much. The European Union emerges here primarily as two things. As a project of the United States centered on Germany by American choice in the early post-war period, and as the system for the administration of an industrial cartel designed as an organ of states and companies, and not as a democracy in itself, nor as an extension of the democracies in the underlying member states. From these two facts, the division of Europe into a prosperous center and a beleaguered periphery follows. There are parts that matter and parts that don't. And so the weak suffer what they must. As for the euro, I confess that at the time I was taken by the arguments of Mitterrand and Kohl that once the currency was in place, the necessary reforms to make it work would have to follow. I should have been aware of the warnings given already in 1971 by my teacher, Nicholas Caldor, and quoted here, it is dangerous error to believe that monetary and economic union can precede a political union. In any event, the experiment has been tried and Caldor, as usual, was right. What then comes next? The most likely course is that Europe will follow the path of Yugoslavia and the Soviet Union breaking apart. The dynamic of national self-interest here is unmistakable. When all the doors and windows are shut, there is nothing left to, uh, to break out through the walls. It is impossible to imagine that the present standard of living or the present combination of freedom and security will be maintained, or that vast increases in xenophobia, racism, violence, mutual distrust, and mutually destructive policies can be avoided. The better path is to reform and replace current European policies and institutions with new ones that have a better chance of working. That is what Stuart Holland, Yanis, and I recommended within the framework of current European treaties in the modest proposal. That is what Yanis attempted in his five months of negotiations as Minister of Finance. That is what the Democracy in Europe movement is about, and that is what is recommended in this book. Up until now, it has been very hard for any of these efforts to gain traction. The sway of fixed ideas and entrenched interests is strong. But in recent months, we've seen Brexit. We've seen the election of Donald Trump. We see the referendum in Italy and the rapidly upcoming election in France. We see the pillar of European political stability, Germany, shaking like a leaf in the wind. Can anyone doubt that the wolf is at the door? It is one of those moments when, as Lincoln said in 1862, we cannot escape history. Permit me to quote the more mundane passages in that statement. As the references to the Union then and the Union now resonate with us today. Fellow citizens, we cannot escape history. We will be remembered in spite of ourselves. No personal significance or insignificance can spare one or another of us. We say we are for the Union. The world will not forget that we say this. We know how to save the Union. The world knows that we do know how to do this. We, even we here, hold the power and bear the responsibility. Thank you very much.